the beauty about it is that it breaks it down by the three main activities that drive the annual goal and then to Casey's point you break it down weekly so there's like it breaks it down monthly weekly and you you're you're talking to your folks that are helping you drive your goals every week and you make adjustments and if they're not focusing on the big rocks we call them the big rocks or they're not time blocking they're letting that little busy work get in the way of that that's where leaders you got to get them reprioritized one of the things that we're real um, keen on is the SMART goal. Everybody heard of a SMART goal, specific measurement? And, and the best way to, to describe that is I always tell people, if I, can't, if I look at the goal and I, I can't tell who's doing what by when, then that's not a SMART goal. So yeah. who, what, when, if you can't answer those questions, I'm working on something that doesn't really, it's not a SMART goal. But Yeah, I'll, yeah, no, that's, that's great. Here's, here's the deal, guys. Um, we think just based on studying a bunch of research you can probably have about five people that report to you for a big company that's really successful you can have about five people that report to you all the so you're concerned with them they're your wealth determiners your job is to coach train encourage motivate provide models and systems and direction to them okay the infantry troops, that's up to them to lead. So as a leader, again, you're not a rescuer, you're a leader. And so being efficient and having measurable goals allows you to do this quickly and efficiently so you're not a so you don't become a rescuer or a manager. I don't like being a manager either. There's a huge difference in leadership and management. When it comes down to how you set your goals, or let's get into these. They have to be measurable clearly measurable and so your goals are usually associated with a number there's a metric that tells you whether you're hitting it or not and so here's what your team will probably do if you start implementing something like this whether it's this form or a different version or whatever you have it at your office if you start implementing something like this your team will probably come back to you and in their goals it's gonna say get better at lead generation convert more appointments Go to the gym more. Become a better husband. Better. Work on. Wait, work on this. Well, better than what? Compared to who? Best at, I don't understand. It's gotta be a number. Because we all agreed, right? If we tracked our lead sources, and we know what our average deal is, and what our conversion rate is, then it's success in real estate is a mathematical equation. If we make this many phone calls, we convert this many deals, and this many of them are gonna close. It's a mathematical equation. And so success in this organization um, then becomes, in any organization, is a model, not a menu. We follow the MREA model, but it's a model, not a menu. And so at National Land Realty, y'all got a model that works for your partners and for your agents. It's not a menu. In other words, they don't have the option, if they're gonna work and, and wear that shirt and represent your brand, they don't have the flexibility to go do it differently if you're all on the same team moving in the same direction. If not, if you're a group of people working together, a group is like ROI. Your business looks different than Brandon's, than Kyle's, than Caleb's around the table. This is a group. We all want to see ROI achieved, but we're all operating independently in our own silos. A team is not that. A team is everybody working towards one goal that everybody benefits from, okay? Now we have a management team at ROI and you have an executive team. Now there's a common goal and a team. But a group looks like this. A team is different. A team is a model, not a menu, okay? So these have to be very measurable. And I don't wanna waste our time here. So if you just write your annual goal in there, how much money you want in listings or how much money you wanna make and how many deals that is, there's a number. So annually I know if I have 50 active buyer seller agreements, that's gonna be close to $100 million. I'm worried about the number of units, not the not exactly the, the volume number, right? Monthly, I need to convert. I need to have closed this many deals a month, and I need to have added this many new deals into the pipeline. Now, weekly is where we get into tasks. Nothing here has been a task until this. So I know I need to lead generate three to four hours a day. So that's, that's a constant across every week for me. Now, mine's done on weeks because it has to mesh with my calendar or else I'm allowing myself to get disrupted. If this doesn't look like my calendar, then I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be successful. Which calendar? You look at your weekly list, so my first goal 
across the board is lead generation. And then it's number of appointments, because those are the two things that matter. Then under that, I might have um, how many interviews, I, if I'm a lead generator for talent that month, how many interviews I want to have. If I've got to go on, uh, if I need to get this contract to close process done, or it's busy work, it turns into busy work eventually. The few, I think the fewer things you can have on a four in one sheet, the better. As a leader, you should want your you should want clarity on your team. And so if your team is putting a bunch of jumble in here, either they're not clear on the activities, they're not clear on the goal, or the third option would be they don't want to be held accountable to it. They don't like writing it on paper because they want to maintain control of it. They like being able to say, I didn't get it done because this happened and I needed this resource and it's scarcity. It's a it's it's a scare. It's, it's a mindset of scarcity. So high achievers have to have a mindset of abundance. I've got a crap load of stuff to do because we've got abundant work to do. That's different than saying I got a lot to do and I want the resources to go accomplish it. I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna do the most important thing. Because I know that's gonna have the biggest impact on the firm. So in other words, if I ask myself this question every morning and you ask your team this, Brandon, if you could come to work tomorrow, you had a limited amount of time, you had to be gone by lunch, and you can only do one thing and the team had to run the business after you left, what would you do in the morning when you got here? If you only choose one, you had to leave when you got it done. You had a limited amount of time to do it. What would you spend your time doing? And so that's what goes on the top of, of every week. And that's what you start every day with. Because that's what's measurable. We know that's the only thing we can control. I can't control if my truck breaks down. It has because I drive an old truck. I can't control if my assistant gets sick or if a client doesn't qualify for a loan, and I can't control if a property doesn't appraise, and I can't control if it floods and washes out fences, or if a wildfire comes through and burns the fences out the week before we close and the buyer walks away. I can't control if acts of God and corn doesn't grow, or we produce a surplus and the market shifts. I can't control any of that. I can't control commodity prices. I can't control the temperature in this room. I can't control my wife's mood when I get up in the morning, which is gonna determine my mood, if I get a good breakfast or not. <laughs> I can't control any of that. My kid gets sick, and I gotta take him to the doctor tomorrow. I can't control any of that. What I can control is what I can control, so I'm gonna own that. And that's what goes on here. And so with your team, you have to have that kind of clarity. You control what you can control because that's the only thing you can control, but you better control that. That's what goes on here. Accountability kind of has a bad connotation. Um, yeah. So does discipline, right? Our kids associate discipline with a bad thing. Well, a discipline, learning a discipline is a good thing. You learn how to be a very good ball player. You learn the skill or discipline of being a very good real estate agent. You learn a skill or discipline of being a very good snow skier, which I'm not. You learn a skill or a discipline of being an exceptional archer or wing shooter or duck caller or turkey caller. That's that's a true skill or a discipline. Accountability is just actually helping and coaching somebody to get there, right? But we, we tend to have a bad connotation with that. And so um, that comes back on us as leaders because most people don't want it written down because they don't want to be accountable to it. Um, but that just comes back on us and leaders to be a better leader and, and make sure they know that this is coming from a place of love. And we're in this conversation, there's no emotion outside of it. And I love you, man. If I didn't love you, wouldn't be here. The accountability then gives you the permission to be hard on the standard, not the person. And they, by the way, that gives your team the permission to hold you accountable too. That's a two-way street.